Well, welcome to my next video. This is the next video in this series of bowls out of this uh, Carol Rothman's book. Getting into laminated bowls, although I've done some laminating on my own in some of these bowls, just kind of experimenting. Plus, I was using up scrap and uh, making the blanks the size I needed them without having to cut more of the original board. Anyway, kind of stretching my material, so to speak, and experimenting with what happens when you put different things in in different uh, orientations. And that's been kind of fun to do, but we'll get one here where it's, it's, as she calls it, laminated bowls. And it's called a double swag bowl. you got two different colored swags. On the other than that, it's a standard bowl, like the very first one I made, a straight up and down bowl out of three quarter inch material. Now this one's going to be made from mahogany and uh, purple heart. Now she used yellow heart. I'm not using yellow heart because uh, it's going to take me a while to get it. Plus, cheapest I found it, I could get two boards, more than really more than I needed for $38. And all I needed was this much material, four little pieces like this. So this is maple. I'm going to substitute maple for that. So other than being just a standard bowl, there's a couple of differences here. The lamination itself, you got to get this, uh, everything in the right orientation. As you can see there, now that's mahogany and purple heart. So I had to cut this section and then these two pieces and the purple heart and I, lam I glued those together. You can see, I've drawn, she's, she's got this procedure over here, tells you how to do this. So uh, once you get that, you center that, get you your uh, orientation marks to center that, and then you do a quarter inch on each side where it intersects uh, the side of the blank, and then you draw a line. That gives you these triangles on the corners. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these, and I'm going to glue these in just like that as we go. Now it's going to take a little while and then we're going to actually draw the pattern on the blank itself. We're not going to use any paper pattern at all. You don't have to copy and glue and do all that sort of thing. Uh, be a lot of sanding to get that off but we sand it a lot anyway. And this is going to be surface glue areas uh, where rings are glued together. You have to sand that to get it flat anyway. So all that will go away. And it won't be seen on the outside of the bowl even if you don't get it sanded. So that's the procedure. I've built myself a little jig. I'm going to use my, uh, my crosscut sled. Because it's easier to line up with the blade to get this cut. And I've got me a little jig that holds it uh, by the corner. Stick it the corner in against the crosscut sled. And line it up with the blade. And I'm going to try to cut it straight down that line on all four pieces. Then I'll come back and glue these in, laminate those four corners back together with that maple in it. And that's how you get this, get four of these, two of these, because you only got two purple hearts, you're gonna have four maples. So anyway, I like the mahogany. It's easy to cut and easy to sand. And it really pops when you put a finish on it. I really have always liked mahogany. It can really look uh, really 3D depth on it if you get a good finish. So I think this is going to be a very nice looking bow. I'm going to try my best not to mess it up because I'm using a little more expensive material. Uh, although I got this this uh, maple I got in a seconds package. I probably don't have a dollar in that whole board that it came out of. But I think it's going to look good. It won't be the same as the yellow, but it'll. Uh, I wasn't going to spend thirty-eight dollars just for that four pieces of yellow. Uh, I know I could use it in other places, but I don't use a whole lot of exotic woods. Uh, I like the mahogany, and some of this for accent pieces is good stuff. So anyway, let me get this over to the saw. I'll try to film that at least cutting one of them, and uh, cut those four corners off, and then we'll get over and and then glue them up.
Okay, so I've got all the lamination done. Made those cuts, put these pieces in. This is maple instead of her yellow heart. Uh, and I've sanded it, I got everything perfectly smooth. Tried to keep it lined up and looking the way it's supposed to. So I had to redraw all the guidelines, which is not a problem. There was a little bit left I could make sure I was in the right place. So I got those. Now I'm going to draw this pattern with a compass, the first ring, and then use the first ring to make the second ring and so forth. So I marked it. She says that three and a quarter inches, which will give you a six and a half inch bow, and then three eighths for the next one. So I'm going to get my compass over here and I'm going to set it up, use that as the center point. As you can see, this is what I came out with with a blank. Uh, and this is what hers looked like. I think I came pretty close, if not exact. Uh, again, hers is yellow. And she, her, her purple heart's a little more purple than mine. Purple heart's one of those exotic woods that will fade to a brown as it's exposed to light. I'm not really crazy about it. It's really purple when you first get it. And uh, there's some others that do the same thing. Be, it's really pretty wood, but then if it's exposed to very much light, it'll eventually turn a a muddy brown color, some of it will. And uh, well, it's still a pretty wood. And uh, once I cut it and finish it, it'll probably bring some of that color back out. I cut through the sides. Uh, I've been sanding on this and, and so forth. So let me get this set down on the table somewhere where we can look at it. And uh, I'll get my compass and we'll draw the, the first two circles to line out the first green. Okay, got my compass ready. Got me a pretty good pivot point there. That's a good sharp bend on that compass. I like using this thing. It's pretty easy to do if you keep it anchored, and it's anchored pretty good right there. And I've got the pencil mark set for ready to draw the first circle. So I'm going to get that done, and then I'll thumb it down and come down to this next mark. Okay, so there's the circle for the first green. I'm going to have to drill me a hole right here at a 28 degrees. Take it and cut this outer part off first, and then we'll proceed with the same procedure of drilling a hole. We'll come down here and drill it and enter and cut that first ring off and use it as a pattern for the second ring. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is cut this outer uh, edge, the outer part of the ring, and cut all this extra off, and then I'll go over and drill a hole in this second one I've drawn. Uh, that'll give me the first ring, which will give me uh, the pattern for the second one. So first I've got to cut the outside here. That was a successful cut. Everything looks good uh, for this. For this one, she recommended a number nine. I've got a number nine be a, a saw blade. Uh, could have used a seven, <clears throat> but uh, I, you got a little harder wood right here. The, this uh, mahogany is not hard to cut, but you go through some harder woods. Uh, don't want the blade to flex. I don't think it will, but we're really good now with a nine. And she recommended a number 54 or a 1 16th drill bit. So I drilled that with a 1 16th. The angle appears to match the 
the angle on the saw, the blade's not in any bind. So, so far, so good. I'm going to cut this one. i got to try to be very good with this because this is going to be the pattern for the next uh, next ring. And I want it to be as smooth and as accurate as I can get it. So, I've got that first ring cut out, and I've got a major problem. Not sure what is going on here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's, it's way off. Now, it's not unusual for it to be off a little bit, but that's way off. And my pattern's not going to line up. As you can see, you'd have to pull it back for it to line up. So, I'm thinking, well, the angle's got to be wrong. Well, that's obviously what it is, but the angle is set as called for this thickness of wood and this thickness of the ring. And I've double checked those numbers. In fact, I've triple checked this ring. It looks a little large, but it measures at three eighths of an inch. And the angle, I've double checked it, triple checked it. It is 28 degrees. And it's not the first time I've cut a bowl at this angle and made it work great as far as lining up. So, she has a little little spot in the book here that says if you have this problem, if the ring sticking out a, more than just a little bit around the base, and that's like an eighth of an inch off all the way around. She says to increase the angle by a degree or two. Well, I've got, this is already messed up, it looks like to me. I mean, I can probably make a bowl out of it, but the uh, swag uh, pattern is not going to be correct. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the angle one degree and cut the next uh, ring and see how that works. And if it needs another degree, I'll do it on the third one. And I'll find out from that point of view, that little procedure, what I need to do with this particular setup of material. That's the only thing different between this bowl and the other bowls I've made is the type of material I'm using. Although the thickness should be the same. It doesn't matter what material you have. And these, this three quarters of an inch. I've measured it in multiple places. It's three quarters of an inch. And the ring is three eighths of an inch. So anyway, I'm going to move forward, try to use this as a learning ex experiment here to see if I can figure out what I did wrong or what went wrong with this. And I've got enough material I can remake this blank and I can start over again. Uh, I go faster the second half, hopefully. But, you know, woodworking, everything always works perfectly. I just don't understand why this happened. Uh, and I hope you know I'm being facetious about everything being working perfectly. So, I noticed the pattern mismatch as soon as I took it off the saw. And then I came over here and set it down and realized I'm way off. I thought, I've got my angle wrong. I've double and triple checked that angle. And it is set correctly as far as all my instrumentation will tell me. So I'm going to increase it one degree, and I'm going to draw this pattern on here, and I'm going to cut the next string, and i see how much closer I am with that. And then, uh, if they need it again, I'll do it on the third one. And I'll see, I'll at least get a bowl. It won't be what I'm looking for, but I won't completely waste the material. And then, like I say, I got more of this material. I got enough to make another blank, at least one more, maybe two. And I'd like to get this swag pattern finished on one of these bowls. So let me go reset my angle. I'll draw my pattern on here. I'll get back to the saw and cut the next one. Okay, I managed to get it pretty well centered on there using the guidelines. And I drilled me a new hole. And I marked this pattern. So I'm going to cut this second ring. And I've increased the bed angle by one degree. It's right about 29 degrees now. So now we'll find out if this makes it any better or if it makes it worse. Well, 
Well, okay. Got that second ring cut, and it's just amazing how much difference there was. I changed it by one degree or so. I went from 28 to around 29, kind of allowing for the unlevelness of the machine, because I couldn't re-zero my, my digital uh, meter there. But this is that cut, and it lines up perfectly. One more degree lines it up perfectly. So I'm going to continue and cut the second one to uh, confirm that. And we'll go ahead and put this together. And sanding it down, it may help me line up, it may not. But anyway, I'm going to uh, continue with this. And I'm going to draw the pattern for the next ring and cut it and uh, with this new angle to confirm this and see if it continues on down. Something about this material, uh, it's different from the material I've been using, and I needed that extra degree. I'm not sure, it still measures a three quarter of an inch. So, um, a little bit of a mystery right now, we'll figure it out, but maybe continue on, or at least get this other ring cut because I'm almost there. And then we'll uh, see about putting it together and see if we can. Um, Let's see if I can finish it. And so there may be other pitfalls I can run into. I need to know about now before I do another completed bow. Again, an almost perfect match. Uh, that's the best matchup I've had in any bowl that I've done so far. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do it on the first ring. But I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to clean these up. And... Uh, glue them together, and then I'm going to sand, and we'll see how it turns out. I don't expect it to be what it's supposed to be, but it'll be a bowl, and I won't completely waste the material. So like I say, I got enough material to do this again, and I'll make another blank <clears throat> and use this new angle that I'm using here. And it's, it's all lining up on the inside pretty well. So uh, let me get it uh, matched up where I have no gaps between the rings and do a little sanding. And I'll start gluing it together and put it in a press and uh, then I'll get it over. I'll go ahead and sand it and finish it like I was going to know what I was doing. You know, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, uh, this is what I'm doing it for is to learn it. So I'm going to finish this bowl up, and then we'll see about the next one. So as I'm uh, lining these up and checking alignment and flatness with each other, I'm discovering that uh, it's very possible if I match this up properly, when I glue it and I sand it down, I'm going to save this bowl. And I'm going to get the design I want, but i got to be correct when I do the gluing which would be the true in either case. So I'm going to glue the first two bottom rings together first, and then I'll set this up and, and work with this and try to get this where it'll be lined up. And maybe I'll save this bowl. I'm going to pick this spot right here to end this video and make this a two-part video because it's going way long. Uh, I'm going to do some sanding and shaping I'm uh, going to glue it together, sand it, and shape it, and finish it. So we're well tw over 20 minutes into this. By the time I get it edited, I may be able to cut that down some. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one and uh, finish it up right here. And then within a few hours after this one is posted, in less than a day, hopefully, I'll have the second video up. I've already got most of it filmed. It's just a matter of uh, breaking it down so I don't have a hour-long video. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, I will tell you we get this bowl finished. Now, I don't think it looks as good as what's in the book, but you stay tuned. You'll see how it turned out. Uh, I didn't go get real crazy in the finishing because it had some problems, but it looks pretty good. I'm not unhappy with it, but you can see if you uh, look at the second video, which if it's not up yet, 
it will be pretty soon. Uh, a lot of you are tuning in on this. It may already be up. You can just continue on if you wish to. But it's a, it's a long process with the sanding and all. So thanks for watching. Uh, if, you, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. And you'll know if another one, the other one comes up or any other of the bowl videos. And if you like it, hit the like button. And tell me what you think about trying to recover from my mistakes. And trying to learn from this. So thanks for watching and hope to see you in the second part of this video.